As an Unreal developer, if you're working mostly with Blueprints, at some point you'll have started learning about event dispatches. If you haven't, I've got an entire video about that uh, going over the basics. But there I didn't go into something uh, very important, and it's something that I see a lot of people skipping over. Because we can very easily, if we go into my third-person character here for an example, uh, make an event dispatch up and say that this is like on death. Like, when we die, uh, we uh, call this, and that then... Uh, runs an event that we have uh, subscribed to this event dispatcher or all of the events that are subscribed to this event dispatcher which is a very good way to communicate either between objects or do a undetermined amount of things when something happens so when i die i do xyz which can be on a whole range of different objects but maybe when I die, I don't want to just send an empty message, because that's what this is doing. This is just sending an empty message out into the void saying, hey, something happened here. But maybe I want to do something a little bit more sophisticated, and that is actually remarkably easy to do. So let's say instead of uh, a on death event dispatcher, what we want to do is on a coin picked up something along those lines and this is going to give us the amount of coins that we just picked up maybe there is different types of coins in our uh, game and when we pick up a coin we want to be able to send through how many coins we've picked up maybe it's a value of one like a green rupee or maybe it's a red rupee which i believe on top of my head is like five it's been a while since i've played the legend of zelda give me a break uh that's still remarkably easy to do uh we can pull that in here and say okay call that but we don't have any like integer or float parameters here it's really annoying to deal with but actually no it's not we can click on the on coin picked event dispatcher here and then in the details we can see we can copy the signature from an event or a function it just has all of the pre-existing uh functions and events on here but we can simply just make uh another one here so let's make a custom event and call this something along the lines of uh, picked up coin and we can give this a signature meaning that it has like a certain set of parameters uh, which let's call this just uh, coins picked up and for now we'll make that a float realistically this probably could be an int as well uh, but now we have an event on this character which has a function which just passes through a float so we can now copy the signature from that uh so look for picked up coin and you'll immediately notice that we now have when we call this a option to send through the value of the coin that we picked so if we combine this with something like uh, a cast or maybe if you want to do it even better a blueprint interface on the coin whenever we pick up the coin it sends through hey tell the player that a coin has been picked up uh, we can now send through some additional information and of course if we want to assign a function to that it'll be now a function that has a parameter to it as well and whatever we put in here when we bind to that whenever this runs it's going to have the uh, information that gets sent through it is important however to note that when uh we have a custom event that we want to bind to a event dispatcher uh, we have to either have it be a empty signature so no parameters at all or it has to match exactly if it has a different set of parameters so for instance say we have a custom event here with a string parameter that will no longer be able to bind to that because it's trying to send through a float value and this thing has a string value and it's not going to be able uh, to deal with that and uh, that does make sense so if you're trying to bind uh, do make sure that these signatures match now there is one downside to doing this inside blueprint that i want to talk about really really quickly because we can do all this and this is really cool this is really powerful and for the most part this will be good but you can see these like these red lines going all over the place uh, and they're a little bit different in blueprint than normal variable lines because if i just right click on this i can promote this to a variable coins picked up i don't know why i would want to do that but i could these red lines which are uh, for event dispatchers 
cannot actually be promoted to variables. What's more, you can't make a event dispatcher, they're called delegates in reality, um, you can't make those a parameter for a function or an event as well. So if we try to make uh, this coin picked up event, well, actually let's just make a new custom event, and we want to give that a, a parameter for whatever this is called, uh, like officially it's called like a delegate, uh, th there's no options for that. There's delegate characters, but none of that is just the delegate. And even if you look for events, dispatcher uh, does nothing to do with that. So we can't make a function like this, which takes in a event dispatcher as a parameter, which is a huge shortcoming of Unreal, because it would be nice to be able to send through those things and then bind certain things dynamically to other functions, depending on variables rather than only static values, which is what this does. And there is a solution for that, but that solution it's called learning C++. So I'm gonna go into C++ real quick and show you about with uh, making a delegate with a, a specific signature, much like we just did with the blueprint here. But then I'm also going to show you how to make a function that takes in a delegate so you can pass through the information about delegates and event dispatchers between different functions and make all of that a lot more variable and a lot more flexible to work with if that is something you need. For the most part, what Blueprint offers you will be fine. It's just nice to be able to have the option of passing through information about delegates if you run into a situation where you really need it. So moving over to C++ for this, we're going to set up a delegate in C++, which is much like setting up a event dispatcher in Blueprint. It's just slightly different uh, to how you set it up. And then we're going to make some functions that either take it in as a parameter or have it as a return value, because both of those are possible. These are not usually things that you would very often do, but it is one of those things that is just straight up not possible to do in Blueprint. So it's good to show you how to do it in case you ever need to uh, mess around with this. So first things first, we're going to start by uh, declaring. So we type declare a dynamic delegate. And after that, you want to specify how many parameters this delegate is going to have. So much like we gave a signature, which we copied from a existing function in Blueprint. Here we can just declare that when we're declaring the type of delegates that we're making. So uh, we can say we want to have one param, no parameters, up to what I believe nine parameters is the most that I see here. Let's do two parameters just to show you how it works. So we will say uh, two params. First things first, we need to give the name of the delegate so that has to start with an F, that's not negotiable, that has to be the case, that's just how C++, Blueprint, Unreal, blah, 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 how it all works. So you start with an F, and let's call this on uh, coins picked up. Then you give the type of the first parameter that you want. So in this case, that will be, uh, let's say, a actor pointer, then we'll give it a name, which will be the coin, then we'll give the type of the next parameter, which in our case will be a float. And then we will give uh, the name for that, which can be total coins, and we end off with a semicolon. That's generally uh, all you need to do to declare a delegate type. Now that we have that, we can make this as a variable in our C++ class. So let's do that uh, in the public section here. Why not? We can just say f on coins picked up. And let's just call that on coins picked up. That is fine. And that's how you make a variable for this. So now we can assign functions to this variable. We can remove function from this variable. We can do anything we can with a normal event dispatcher. This is just a variable type that we can work with. Now it's important to note that for normal dynamic uh, delegates, you're going to have some trouble if you want to make this into a U property. We're not really talking about that today. Uh, so we're not gonna. Just note that if you want to make this into a U property, it needs to be a multicast delegate, but that then comes with a set of problems uh, on its own. So we're not going to do that. Next up, we want to make a function, and this is giving an error right now. It should fix itself in a moment. Sometimes VS Code is just a little bit slow. It might also be because I used the same name uh, when experimenting a moment ago. So let's change this to on coins picked up delegates, just to make sure that it's a different name. 
and it'll sort itself out in a moment. Now let's make a function that has this delegate type as a return value. So we can just declare a function like this and let's call this simply something like get coins picked up delegate, which will just return that variable for us. Of course, you can make some uh, more intricate stuff with this, uh, which does a lot of fun and interesting stuff. We're not really talking about all that here today because the use case for using delegates like this as variables, passing them through a lot. While it's very powerful, it's also relatively niche. Uh, I just want to show you it is possible and how you can possibly do it if you run into this issue at any point in the future. Uh, so in much the same way, we can make, instead of a function that has that as a return type, we can do a function that has that as a parameter. Let's just do the thing that Copilot suggests to us, making a setting function uh, for our coins picked up. Now, that is altogether not the most useful thing. What you would more commonly uh, use this for is some kind of callback. So uh, at the end of a certain function in your C++ code, you want to be able to like bind a blueprint function to run at the end. Specifically, if you're also doing something that is like asynchronous, that is then even more important. Like for instance, if you are loading a data asset through C++, you have to bind a function to that that runs when that loading is finished. And then in that function, you can maybe like pass through uh, to some kind of blueprint stuff. That's the kind of stuff that we're uh, working with when we actually put this into practice. Again, relatively niche. Now let's make both of these into uh, a U function that is blue print callable. It set it to category input. I don't really care about the category. I just want to be able to show you what this does. So making the U function makes it callable uh, in Blueprint through that input and will compile. And that will take a second here and then we'll go back into our Blueprint graph to show everything off. So let's remove everything we did with the event dispatches here because that's just uh, for example, we've passed that. Now, if we check, uh, on coin picked up, we don't actually get uh, the value because we haven't set the value to u property. Again, that's problematic. But we do have two functions. We have a getting function, which uh, gets us the delegate reference from whatever actor we put into here, or whatever character we put into here, rather. So now we can say, hey, this one actor is going to uh, bind to the delegate on something else. And we can pass through that delegate to other stuff now fairly easily. Uh, meaning that if we go into, uh, for instance, the level blueprint or the game mode or the whatever, right? Another blueprint uh, altogether. What we could do is let's just on begin play, get our player character, cast that to uh, delegates character. That's what this character is called because I just called this project delegates. And now we can get the coin picked up delegate. So now we have this function here, which gets us a delegate on this specific character, which usually we couldn't do. Usually with just blueprint, we wouldn't be able uh, to do this. Of course, if we just made that delegate as an event dispatcher on there, we could still get that and assign it, but now we can very easily pass that through to our stuff. But we can set the coin picked up delegates as well, and now we get something a little bit more interesting, because now we have the opportunity to, just as an ID, uh, get the player character one and set its delegate to the value of the player character zero delegate, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, it takes a little bit more of careful setup to really create a system where this becomes useful. So this might seem useless to you right now. And for the most part, it is until you run into an issue where you really, really need to be able to pass through this information as a parameter or as a return value, in which case uh, you'll be happy to know it. So that's a little bit more about event dispatches and delegates and going a little bit more in depth about them. I talked about them in my Blueprint course. I talked about them in my C++ course. And this is just leveling that entire thing up a little bit and marrying the two together and seeing how they 
really can work and what you can do with them and where limitations may lie. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas, 